Welcome back. I'm Astrid of Unique Astrid, weaver, spinner, and garment designer. This is the second episode to my three-part series on how to get weaving on a budget. The first episode was on rigid head of looms and all about them. I'll link that in the description below. Today we're talking about pen looms and specifically two different types of pen looms. So pen looms are fantastic because they're great for stash busting. Trust me, and I'll talk about that more later. They are extremely small and portable, and you can store them in just about anything. So I store mine and all the yarn that I, whatever project I'm working on, all the yarn goes in here. This is a train case that I picked up in uh, Shenandoah Valley when I was antiquing there. And uh, so I, I love to store all my things in there. So my current project on here is using this yarn that my local guild did a thing where we studied 12 different breeds and we got about an ounce of each and then spun them up. And you can't really do much of a big project with this because it's just a little bit of yarn. And frankly, some of these yarns, because they come in a range of uh, how soft they are, some of them are closer to a rug wall and then some of them are closer to like something you would use in like a baby blanket. Um, so they come in a huge range of microns and how soft they are. And so um, I'll talk about what you can do with those later. So the two looms we are using today, uh, number one is the total loom. And uh, this is one of my favorite looms, which I'll talk about more in just a minute. Um, this is about $150. But it is super magical because it converts into a bunch of different shapes. So they come with a ton of different angles and for corners. And you can just unscrew what's on here. And then there's these sections with all the pins that your yarn will go through. And then you just change the base of it, which is all these. And you can change them to different things to make it into different shapes. So I, for example, this one I believe goes to a large hexagon, it does a large square, um, what else does it do? It does quite a few things, it does like five different things. And so you can convert it into all of those and do tons of different projects with this. So it's almost like for just under $150, it's like you're getting multiple looms just out of one. So the second loom is the turtle loom. And this is their one inch hexagon. They do all kinds of sizes. It goes from two and up from there. And they also have elongated hexagons, which are also really cool. And you can do, um, if you were to get four or five of these, this one was only about $20. So if you were to get four or five, then they would uh, add up. And for just about $100, you could have all different shapes and sizes and do things with that as well. So now I'm gonna demonstrate weaving a sample for you. Now, this is a hook that I use for the total loom. And whatever size your hook may be, and I'll show you um, how to use this, but the shorter length of your loom, you want to have a little handle on just the end of it. And this one is just a little bit short, but this is the standard length of a crochet hook. And um, we use this to go over and under our yarn when we are going to weave. Um, the turtle loom, and now it, because that's just a small one inch thing, uh, comes with a shorter one. And I really like this because it does have a little loop in the end because with the total loom, I also have to use this because this has the loop on the end. Um, so it kind of, it kind of varies on uh, your weaving style, but, um, I'll show you how I'm going to make one. So today I'm using a yarn that I blended merino with, some recycled sari silk that Indian women wear uh, as a garment that's made out of silk, but then lots of fiber artists use it that it's recycled and taken, and the threads are sort of shredded up into uh, a different uh, form of yarn so that we can reuse what's here. And they just add an excellent pop of color and a little bit of texture, and um, I love using sari silk. It, it's a great, just uh, a little thing to blend your yarn with. So I'm gonna start with a slip knot. And on the total loom, we have um, these strips where they have all the little hooks. But then on the corners too, we just have uh, a couple of nails inserted. I'm gonna start by going the long way because that is the way that I like to go. 
That way I have length with my hook, like I was talking about, because here there would be no room for my hook if I were to go that way, and let alone space for me to hold on to the hook. So I've got my slip knot, and I like to work from the bottom up, so I'm just going to place it on the very bottommost nail that's here. And then I put my finger on that nail because they're not inserted, they are removable uh, so that we can later take it off. So that way I need to just put my finger there and I'm bringing this up and around to the top nail. And then for the start, I'm just going to use my hand just for the first one. And I'm going to pull under that thread that we just brought up and loop around the next one and then bring it down. And also, this will be easier to see when I do a little bit more. So I'll show you then. So, and this is super quick and easy. It only requires a few yards of yarn. So it's 100% fantastic if you find any kind of little balls of yarn left around. Or maybe you have uh, a bit of hand spun or some really nice yarn left around from a small or a big project that you did, and then you can use it and reuse all those wonderful yarns without needing to do a huge project. You can just do little ones and then later make them huge. So I love to just create a bunch of these sometimes, and then you can pull from a drawer, and you can mix and match these in all sorts of ways. You can even mix and match the different yarns and textures a little bit. Um, you can do so much with these. So here now that I've got a little bit more worked up, I'll show you once I finish this little uh, bit here. So on our pin loom, we do little roundabouts. So I'm starting off here. This is where I left off. And so I'm going to bring it up the next pin that isn't being used. And then I'm going to pull it up. Oops, it didn't catch on that pin. Sometimes that'll happen. You can just push it down a little bit. And then I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to set it down on the next available pin up top. And then I'm going to hook it around there. Always going from the left side of the pin around to the right side. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hook end and I'm going to weave under, so I go over, under, over, under, and repeat that however many times so that I'm lifting up every other one of my threads. And then I just took my yarn and pull it through and then set it on the next available hook on the right hand side. Now I'm going to pull it down and set it on the next available hook on the bottom right hand side. So that means that we just did a full roundabout, is what I call them. So we added one thread on the left hand side by going up, and then we wove through a pick here, that's what we call that when we put through one thread. We wove that through on this end, and then we hooked it over here, brought it down by adding another one when we came down, and then because I pulled that down with me, it continues that little bit that I wove up there. It not, uh, it mirrors that on the bottom here. So if we continue doing that same process, and it'll just slowly get wider, but the weaving will also weave down. So I'm going to do another one for you. I'm going to hook that bottom one, and you really do pick up steam. So I'm making sure that my yarn is hooked. This yarn has so much texture because of the sari silk, I just have to be careful that that doesn't get caught on anything. And this is very similar on the turtle loom. Uh, you just, it's, this turtle loom is so small, this is one inch. And so um, you just have to be really aware that you're not missing any pins or anything. Um, but it is super easy. And I wouldn't recommend starting on a small one inch. I'd recommend starting on something a little bit bigger so that you can adjust to using it. And then maybe once you decide that you want to use a project where you need something small like a one inch, I would uh, then purchase a one inch. So I'm going to continue doing this and 
trust me, you will speed up like crazy. And so every time that I do this over and under process, I'm picking up just one or two threads more. And then I forgot to mention before that I do kind of push it in with the end of my hook. And then spool off some more yarn. And then bring it down. And pull that. So, and we basically just repeat this over and over and over. The process doesn't change at all. And then, except a little bit at the beginning and end, but for most of the process, we are simply going over and under. I'm hooking, and you can see how fast I've already created this little piece. Oops, sorry about that. Sometimes it'll get a little stuck on some of the texture. But I also wouldn't uh, start with something with too much texture. Um, but you will quickly progress in all the kinds of yarns you can do and the different shapes and sizes. Now there is two different techniques on uh, using a pin loom. This personally is my absolute favorite. However, if you look up uh, Shacked has a video on their YouTube channel on a zoom loom, which is their pin loom. And I, the reason why I don't have a zoom loom is because this does do squares. I can convert this into all those different shapes. And frankly, I just, I love diamonds more than squares. They just, you can see all the different angles and if you're using all kinds of yarns they just meet in different ways and I just love that effect but they have a video where they don't do this technique but um, that is a little complicated um, the first couple times I tried it I totally got it tangled um, but you will get the hang of this so quickly all these little looms in this three-part series will you will get the hang of them just so quickly. So, and this one, I keep getting caught on. This one yarn with a little too much pop of texture in it. It kind of gets a little stuck on there. But, that's alright. Everything is still... Oops. Going just close. Well, let's see. And the other thing I will mention that I love about the turtle looms is that they're one of the few brands of looms that change their set. So the set is the density of the yarn and how many threads you can fit in an inch. I talk about that a little bit more in my previous episode. And um, a lot of people will tell you if you're using fine yarns just to double it and use two yarns in your hand when you're doing this. But that can get tangled and a little confusing. But the turtle loom, you can purchase different sets. And that way, if you're using really fine yarns, then they will have options for that. And I will link all this in the description below. So, and this quickly just works up. You can leave one of these in maybe half hour, 20 minutes when you pick things up. Just put on that a little bit. So, and already you can see that it is quickly progressing and getting bigger. I only have these few here left to do along this edge corner. So, by starting on this long center stripe, then it's slowly widening and slowly moving down here. So I just love this yarn. I made a shawl out of this yarn one time and um, it just it's very soft because it's using very fine merino which is um, one of the finest wools that is out there um, but it's also got the silk which provides uh, a lovely texture in there and um, just it's a great blend to work with. So I made so much of this yarn that I probably will have a lot of this yarn for a while. 
I have all this yarn left. And it's super easy to just keep working. So all those diamonds that I was talking about earlier with the breed study, those are all for a project. I decided to make a tote bag because like I was talking about before, and I said I'd talk about this now, um, they are all very different in feel. So some of them are super fine, some of them are not very fine, and are more rug wools where they're uh, a lot coarser and uh, n n definitely not next to skin. So those I plan on making a tote bag because a tote bag you can carry around anywhere no matter what the feel of the yarn is. It has the same function and also because I'm still growing um, it will last me forever because I can never grow out of a tote bag. So when I go to tons of weaving conferences, everyone always has something that they've made, and I thought it would be super cool to have that tote bag there. And something else that I was planning on making is some shoes. Now, these shoes um, are used woven fabric, and so that is what I got this little one-inch uh, pin loom for, is because then you can fit so much more in just that little side stripe of the shoe that then I can use all kinds of colors for that. And the project with the tote bag, um, I forgot to mention that all the breed study samples, they are all different colors. There's creams and browns and grays and there's just, it's all natural colors. I haven't dyed anything. So I think it'll really make a beautiful tote bag. So I've been working uh, on making those all into diamonds. That's why I have this at the moment in a diamond shape. In the summer, we always travel. And so that's mostly why I have this train case. But it's also just a great thing to store all my yarn in uh, for the pin loom. It just, I can carry it in there, and I share space with three other people in a small camper van, and so it's nice to just have everything confined to one case, and then whenever I want to weave, I can just pull it out, grab my pin loom, and just weave. So I'm almost done here. You can see it's getting a little tighter because... This here is all woven, and this here is all woven, so there's only a little bit of space here left with my threads, and so I still have to weave over and under with my hook, and so it just starts to get a little bit small, and sometimes too, if I need room, oh, actually, let me do something and then I'll show you in just a moment. Sometimes I'll pull out one of the side nails, and I'll show you which one in just a moment, so that I can have a little bit more room for my hook until I am ready to uh, do that last little pick. So the last pick that I do will be straight across the center from this last this uh, center nail to this center nail. However, my hook is always coming in from the right and going over to the left because I'm a righty. So I am going to pull out that one until I get there. I still have a few more to do. That way I just have a little bit more room to stick my hook in there and move around. So let's see, I think I only have two, maybe three more to do. So move that around. And every time you're doing the same thing over and under. On the rigid huddle, we changed every time. On this, because of the amount of threads that we're adding, it simplifies it. So even though I'm going over and under every single time, the weaving still alternates. Now, weaving, you can do all kinds of designs. 
but one of my favorite things to do with pin looms is um, to play with the textures of the yarn. You can do a lot more with textures here because you have less things uh, built into the loom that define what you can do with that. And you can also play with the shapes. Now, a lot of times I talk about design, but in this, you have a very simple design, but you can mix and match all those colors in big or small quantities or whatever you choose. It really opens up your options when you're talking about what kind of design things you want to do and that sort of thing. Let's see, I only have two more now. Let's see. So every time I do one of these, uh, a next, the next pick, I am doing a new, a, two more where I'm, when I'm going over and under. So it quickly escalates as to how many threads are going over and under. Um, so here, this is the last one where I'm going over and under. And um, so it takes just a second longer every time, but you do get a rhythm um, of going over and under and kind of uh, doing that. You pick up a rhythm so quickly with these things. Let's see. Just about done. There we go. Okay. So I'm going over. And... Okay, now here I need to take this nail and put it back in. Just give myself a little bit more yarn there. And then I can pull it tight. So now that I've got my side pin back in and I've done my final pick, you may notice that because when we do this and we go back and forth, these two threads that are here are in the same opening. So we have to put one last thread in between them so that that can be the proper length. So I've got scissors here and I'm gonna use those in just a moment, but I just need to measure out first, just kind of eyeball it. You just need one pick, one more pick across and then enough length so that when you weave this together with your next one, you can use this tail and just use that to kind of loop the two together or sew them or whatever technique you decide to use later on. So this is where this hook comes in and I am going to just thread this through the eye here, which I have a small or a thick yarn and a small hook, but um, here we go. And I have enough length here that it won't come out. It goes like that. And so, oops, <laughs> before it was like this. Now I'm gonna turn it so that where this end is coming out is on my right hand side. Before I had it this way so that when I brought the hook through that I could use my right hand. Now I'm flipping this so that when I do the same thing, I'm still using my right hand. Now making sure that it goes around the outer nail on this end, I'm going to start to go under and over. So whatever it looks like your threads are that it was the last one that um, they're on the same, you're just going under and weaving over and under the same. I'm just going to move that. So here, I'm weaving, I'm pulling up the opposite of what I can see I pulled up last time. That way, again, it alternates. If we went through the same couple threads every single time, you would just get a bunch of threads through a bunch of yarn. This, they're all interlaced. So I'm almost there, I'm just going to pull it out because... I don't have quite enough room, so I'm going to make sure that that catches that outmost, outermost nail. And now, you can see, I've just got a little bit left to do on the edge, but now you can see that it's all perfectly woven. And you can really see all that texture, too. And it worked out very nicely as well that you have, or I ended up with a stripe of color here, and then it's kind of lighter on the edges. Um, pinlooms are great that they um, 
the way that the colors work up on here, no matter what color sequence you're working with, um, they always, I find, work up quite beautifully. So now I've got that finished, and I'm just going to pull that there, and then we can pop this off. Well, I am missing, actually, I just see that I am I'm missing just a few threads on here. It um, Sometimes the end ones, these are very tight, because you're going through just one little thread, and pulling that up can be difficult sometimes. So sometimes I use a hook to assist me um, when doing this. Let's see, did I get it? Yeah. So I'm just pulling that up with my hook so that I can allow my needle to slip through. Sometimes you just have to fiddle with that last one a little bit until you can get your needle under it. Let's see, and I think I have one more to do as well. Yes. Let's see, I'm gonna... Leaving in that corner nail, I'm just gonna remove the other two nails um, so that I can also get under this one piece more easily. Let's see. There we go. Okay. Yeah, when you, this is a little bit th thick of a yarn, so if you were using a slightly thinner yarn, that would make it easier as well. Um, you can play around with your different thicknesses of yarn, but this is a little bit on the thicker side for using this yarn. So now I'm just going to remove all my corner nails. Let's see. This one's stuck. There we go. And when I go to pull out my the corner that I started on, just the way that I like to start, it won't be woven under, so I just take a hook and pull it through. And super easy. So I just wove one of these in 20 minutes. And then you can just continue doing that. And oh, missed a nail. And then I'm just gonna stick my long hook or uh, needle under here and pull those, kind of just pull it under. And then, voila. And then all you have to do to set it back up again is to stick your nails in. And then you're going to repeat the process all over again. And you can do this with all different colors and all different things so that you have so, you have so many options with a pin loom. Um, you are really free to do whatever you want with color and texture. And especially with the total loom, even shape. So now to resources. One of my number one resources is Facebook groups. There are so many Facebook groups. And I forgot to mention Facebook groups in Rigid Petal episode as well, but um, there is tons of groups out there, and they all show so much support in those groups, and they are just fantastic. As far as books are concerned, there is so many, but the one I found the most helpful is 100 Penland Squares. And there's a couple things on design there, and even some things that you can do with your squares. As far as costumes and things, there was a couple of cool things in there. Now, that book can be, can be very hard to find, but in my third installment of this series, I'll be talking about ways to find difficult books for very little or even no money. So, thanks for watching today. I hope you check out my other episodes to this series, and I really hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you next time.